I got some clips from our buddy. Yes, sir. Caddy. All right. You remember, guys, you remember I said yesterday, the oldest sources, Islamic sources, teach that it was Isaac that Abraham offered up, not Ishmael. You remember I said that? And I gave you a link to my article. Well, you're going to hear it from the horse's mouth. Are you ready? We're going to play Yasser Kadi. Here's the link. Library chats E7. Ismail versus Ishaq as a sacrifice. A case study of tafsir and scholarly influence, which <clears throat> he did on September 25, 2020. September 25, 2020. I really suspect it will only be a matter of time he deletes this from the backlash, the pushback from Muslims, because he makes admissions that are embarrassing to the Muslims who've tried to deceive Jews and Christians into thinking that the Quran clearly says it was Ishmael, not Isaac, that Abraham offered up. And I took an excerpt from his Facebook post where he announced he was going to do this lecture, and I put it on my blog because in that short excerpt, it's a paragraph where he's introducing the lecture, he mentions the names of the Muslim scholars and the companions of Muhammad and their followers who said it was Isaac. And I'll give you the link, Lord willing, in a few minutes. But let's listen to Yasser Qadi from the horse's mouth. From the horse's mouth. Okay, now let me get to the three-minute, 20-second mark. I even left notes where to listen from. Here you go. And what we shall, uh, inshallah ta'ala, go over and demonstrate, this isn't an opinion, this is a fact that I'm about to state, that the majority, some would argue, the vast majority of early commentators of the Qur'an, the majority, dare say the vast majority, listen again. This is a fact that I'm about to state, that the majority, some would argue, the vast majority of early commentators of the Qur'an, the majority... And I'm giving you a fact, not opinion. Yasser Qadi, thank you. Glory to Jesus Christ for even opening your mouth to destroy your own religion and make it easy for us to destroy your prophet for the glory of Jesus. This is a fact, not an opinion. The majority, the early majority commentators said it's Isaac, Ishaq. This is a fact that I'm about to state that the majority, some would argue the vast majority of early commentators of the Qur'an, of the earlier generations, felt that the dhabi'ah, or the uh, sacrifice, was intended for Ishaq alayhi salam, and not Ismail. Whereas, of course, as we are all aware, uh, the position that it is Ismail alayhi salam is now the default, so much so that when somebody mentions Ishaq, uh, people, uh, they think this is an unorthodox or a deviant position. Uh, I'm going to skip now to the 5 minute 20 second mark. That was a 3 minute 20 second mark. Now we're going to go to the 5 minute 20 second mark. Guys, pay attention. What he's going to say about Tabari. We quoted one Muslim saying Tabari, the best commentator. Look what he's going to say about Al Tabari. Um, the argument that I'll be making is, of course, uh, and this is not an argument, I should take that back. The facts that I will be presenting, this is an open shut case. The facts that I will be presenting is that there was a seismic shift in how our scholars of tafsir viewed the story of uh, Ibrahim and who the sacrifice was. Did you hear what he's saying? It's not an opinion. The fact, it's a fact, not an opinion. This is a fact. There was a seismic shift where all the earliest sources said it was Ishaq and later it became a What is really interesting and why this is the case is again beyond the scope of our this one lecture because there's so many points and they're all interconnected. What is really interesting, there's nothing in the Quran that is explicit, whether it was uh, Ismail or Ishaq, and there's nothing in the authentic Sunnah that is explicit as well. Nothing in the authentic Sunnah, nothing in the Quran, whether it was Ishaq, whether it was uh, Ismail alayhi salam and this is very interesting because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the names of Ishaq and, Ibra and Ismail and Ibrahim many times yet when it comes to the story uh, adjectives are used and so the adjectives are ambiguous did you hear what he said he said nothing in the Quran or the sunnah of Muhammad explicit nothing from Muhammad that's explicit nothing in the Quran explicit that says it's either Isaac or Ishmael Ishaq or Ismail, nothing. Listen to him, and then he's going to mention the scholars, and then he's going to mention Muhammad's companions and their followers. You're going to get blown away. Now, um, 
the uh, the the notion that earlier scholars uh, predominantly held it to be ishaq it is something that you can look it up and do your own research and I will quickly quote you uh, you know some of the research that we've done uh, in this regard that uh, especially the giant Ibn Jadil Tabari who died 310 Hijra did you see what he called Tabari the Muslim yesterday that I cited said Tabari is the best you see what he just called Tabari especially the giant Ibn Jarir al Tabari. So you hear him? From the horse's mouths. So when the Muslims tell you who's Tabri, say, shame on you, you wicked liar. Tabri is a giant, the best commentator. Okay. What did Tabri say? Who was the child of sacrifice? From Yasser Qadi, the gift who keeps on giving. Holes in the narrative. Ibn Jarir al-Tabari argues very forcefully with almost a degree of like certainty or you can say is very uh, 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 very forceful that it is in fact Ishaq and not Ismail and uh, he mentions this a number of times especially here in Surah Safat and he mentions a number of arguments 10 minute 38 second mark okay get ready uh, Al-Tabari then mentions a number of Sahaba and Tabi'un who argued that it is Haq. And it is very interesting to note that the overwhelming majority of the Sahaba and Tabi'un who held positions about this held positions that it was Ishaq alayhi salam. Bam! Let me explain who the Sahaba and the Tabi'un are. He just said, Tabri admitted, the overwhelming majority of the Sahaba. Sahaba means Muhammad's companions, those who were eyewitnesses to Muhammad and their followers after them. The majority of them said it was Isaac, Ishaq, alayhi salam. Did you guys hear it? Did you guys hear it? He said, Tabari says, the giant Tabari, the best commentator, the majority of Muhammad's companions and their followers, majority said it was Isaac, Ishaq, alayhi salam. At least eight of the Sahaba it has been reported that they held this view, including Umar ibn al-Khattab, Ali ibn Abi Talib, al-Abbas. Look, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he believed was Isaac. Ali, Ali ibn Abu Talib, Abbas, Muhammad's paternal uncle. Notice the people. The Tabri says, I believe it was Isaac. Umar, the second caliph. Ali, the fourth caliph. Abbas, Muhammad's paternal uncle. The uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his son Abdullah ibn Abbas, the Habr of the Ummah and the Tarjuman of the Quran. Ibn Abbas, considered one of the greatest Muslim scholars who ever lived, him. Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud, one of the four men that Muhammad said learned the Quran directly from. Jabir ibn Abdullah. Jabir ibn Abdullah. Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. Abu Huraira, Abdullah ibn Umar. All of them said it's Isaac, Ishaq. Now watch. All of these, it has been reported from them. So Umar and his son, Abbas and his son, Ali ibn Mas'ud, Jabir and Abu Huraira, all of them, it has been narrated that they said it is Ishaq alayhi salam. Uh, as for the Tabi'un, too numerous to mention. Too numerous to mention. Tabi'un meaning the disciples, the companions of those who knew Muhammad. Too numerous to mention. How many of them said it was Ishaq? So he's going to mention 15. Over 15 of the famous Tabi'un, the giants of Tafsir, who studied directly from the Sahaba. Giants of commentary. Tafsir means commentary. Who studied directly from Sahaba Mom's command. The giants. Uh, again, Mujahid, Alqama, Sa'id ibn Jubayl, Qatada, Ikrimah, Ata al Zuhri, Malik ibn Anas. The list goes on and on. The Tabi'un. Tab uh, uh, the list goes on and on. Like the giants of uh, the, the Tabi'un. A uh, majority of them, overwhelming of them, clearly held the view that it is Ishaq alayhi salam. The earliest books of tafsir that we have, tafsir al-Suddi, tafsir Muqatil ibn Suleiman, died 150 Hijrah. They mention Ishaq without even a hint of controversy, without even a hint of controversy. Now, was the position that it is Ismail unknown? No, it has been. Even a tabari discusses this. And uh, in the earliest books, it is ascribed to three Sahaba. Uh, and interestingly enough, all three of these are found in the previous list as well. Now, notice what he's saying. Let me give you a little background on what he's saying. He's saying the view that it was Ismail was known even at that time. There were some who said it was Ismail, Ishmael, Ismail. Okay, now, listen to what he's going to say. And he's, he's going to mention three. Tabari mentions three. Three, right? Three who said it was Ismail, Ishmael. Pay attention with the three are and what he's going to say. Guys, pay attention. 
So it is most famously ascribed to Abu Hurairah. But Abu Hurairah has also ascribed to him the position of Ishaq. And it is also ascribed to Ibn Abbas. But also Ibn Abbas has been ascribed the position of Ishaq. And it is ascribed to Ibn Umar. So all three that it has been ascribed to as being Ismail, you also find in various books of tafsir that uh, these early authors have ascribed Ishaq's position to them as well. The three that he mentioned, Ibn Amr, Ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira, who said it was Ishmael, Ismail, there are also traditions from these three saying it was Isaac. In other words, they contradict. But Tabari himself said, Tabari himself said that the most authentic tradition is that it was Ishaq, Isaac, not Ishmael. Now, the final clip. Are you ready for the final clip? And we're going to begin. Final clip, guys. You are so blessed. I am so blessed to live at this time. Our Lord Jesus, who lives, who's almighty, is making it so easy for us to destroy these fake worldviews and show the Bible is his word and Jesus is Lord. Okay, the final clip. This comes from the 13 minute, 57, 52nd mark. 13 minute, 52nd mark. Also Ibn Qutayba, Dainuri. Ibn Qutayba. Remember the name Ibn Qutayba. Notice what he's going to say about this Muslim, Ibn Qutayba. He mentioned Asraqi as another one who believed it's Ishaq. Notice what he's going to say about Ibn Qutayba. Who is he? Is he some Joshmo? Also Ibn Qutayba, Dainuri, the famous polymath, perhaps the first truly intellectual polymath of our ummah, Ibn Qutayba, a very understudied figure, died 276. Ibn Qutayba mentions in his writings that uh, Ibrahim was tasked uh, with uh, 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 he, he writes in his Kitab al-Ma'arif, excuse me, that Ishaq is the dhabih. And this is the position of the majority of the people of knowledge. This is Ibn Qutayba, uh, the polymath, the intellectual genius, the giant. Ibn Qutayba is writing in 276, he passes away. So uh, assume that he's writing around 250 or so, that he's saying the majority of the people of knowledge say that Ishaq is the dhabih. Did you catch what he said? This intellectual giant this polymath said that 250 years after muhammad's death the majority of the scholars the ulama the majority say it was isaac and they were saying this 250 years after muhammad's death and who said it ibn qutayba whom he just said was the polymath intelligent intellectual giant thank you my friend and he ascribes this position to Ibn Abbas, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, Abbas, the uncle, and Abu Huraira, the same one that is ascribed Ismail, he is ascribing Ishaq uh, to. Uh, but then he does mention that it is said that uh, Ibn Umar said that it is uh, Ismail uh, in this regard. So he mentions both points, but he mentions the majority of the people of knowledge say that it is Ishaq. 250 years after the death of Muhammad, the majority of the scholars say it was Isaac, not Ishmael. Now, why is it that these Muslim debaters like Jamal Badawi and others hide these facts from you? Why is it the majority of these Muslims know their sources but do not tell you this and hide it from you if they are not truly satanic, demonic, filled with the devil, exposing that their true father is the devil, a liar and a murderer to deceive you from the truth. And yet, is there any debate as far as God's true word is concerned, the Holy Bible, that it's Isaac? Mm -hmm. Old Testament, New Testament, Isaac. And they want us to believe that the Quran is the perfect book of guidance and the Bible's corrupted. Yeah, right. 